Today we're going to be installing some Zero 3D TAC-10 light cannons on Max's Street Glide. But before we get to the install, let's open the box up and show you guys what's in it. Colored detailed instructions, as always. It's well packaged, it has some foam on the top, and then you've got your lights. It also comes with this bracket that the light will sit into. Under that, you have a couple brackets and wiring harness and some hardware. A nice little touch I just noticed right on here. Very small, but branded. That looks really good on there. Okay, so first order of business, we're gonna yank the outer fairing off. It's just four bolts. I'll show you how to do that real quick. You always wanna start by covering the fender with something, a towel, a rag, whatever you have, because if you drop anything, it's bound to land on your paint. The fairing bolts are different lengths. The long one goes in the top, short one in the bottom. Just remember that for reinstallation. Same with your windshield bolts, long one in the center, short ones on the side. Once you get your fairing off, you can just roll this forward and remove your headlight by unplugging right here. We're going to set this out of the way so it doesn't get damaged. Okay, once you get the fairing off, you have two acorn nuts right here that hold this uh, turn signal bracket on. We're going to take those off and then we'll pull the studs out that are underneath them. Bracket just pops off, you unplug it right here. All right, inside the hardware kit, per side, you've got two little button head bolts, a carriage bolt, three stainless washers, two lock washers, two rubber grommets, and a nut. Next, we're gonna install this, the light on the bracket and onto this bracket. And it's a little, it's kind of a pain, but it's not overly bad. Uh, once you get to this part, it's a little tight in here, but you wanna tie it that way your lights aren't moving around as you're going down the road. All right, first off, this bracket has a straight edge and kind of a slanted side to it. Uh, the slanted side is gonna go towards the back of the light. But before we do anything with that, we're gonna take our carriage bolt, slip that down into the top of the bracket like that. That way we can get our light on afterwards. But what I have found is easiest is take your rubber washers, your grommets. Those will fit in the side of the light. Then take your button head bolts, put a washer on those, set them aside. And then these two lock washers, it gets a little tough. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda just put them on the light itself and then hold it there as we slip our bracket on. Once you get it slipped over, then you can put your button head bolts and get those kinda lined up. All these bolts do come with uh, Loctite already applied to the threads, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Then all you're gonna do is just snug these up. You don't need to go He-Man tight with them at this point, or ever, really, but uh, we're just gonna snug them up for now because once we get them on the bike, we're gonna have to adjust them so they're not looking like a, like a pug. Next, we have our big bracket here. So this is gonna go towards the back of the bikes. And so the light is just gonna drop on top 
like that. Again, we got thread locker already on the bolt, so we just need to put our nut on. So not only do we have thread locker on the bolt, the nut also has nylon on it. And then just take a half inch wrench and snug that up for now. This wire will go down in front through the bracket. And you can do this before you put it on the big bracket if you want, but it does slip in there okay, so we're just doing it afterwards. And that's how the light, or that's how the wire will come out of the light. Okay, once you get them put together, you're gonna put them on the bike with the two studs that you took off. And you're gonna leave them a little loose to make it easier to put the fairing on later. Then run your wire underneath like this and thread it through this hole. Make sure both of those wires have enough play in them and it's mounted. Okay, once you get the actual lights installed, it's time to wire them. Right up here next to your vent, you're gonna have an accessory switch or accessory plug, I guess. It's a power plug. It's got a little dummy in it. Pop the dummy out. And then the female side of your harness is gonna plug in to that. This relay module and everything is gonna sit up there, so you're gonna to wanna to route these wires kinda of down out of the way of everything else. Then you're just gonna hook these bullet connectors up. Super easy, they're all color coded. They'll make a little click when you get them tight. So white to white, red to red, and black to black for your ground. Once those are hooked up, you've got a red and a yellow. All you're gonna do is just kind of touch them together and that's gonna complete the circuit so we can test it. We are gonna add the optional switch to these so he can turn them on and off on his dash panel. But in order to check them, we're just gonna hook these two wires together and everything should come on with the key. Go ahead and turn the key on. Bam. Those look really awesome. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but there's a halo light on the outside that'll come on with the key, and then the LED on the inside, which we're gonna hook up to a switch. All right, if you're not putting the accessory switch on, if you didn't get this separately with your lights, you're done. All you have to do is put your fairing back on, adjust the lights, tighten up the bolts, you're good to go. If you got this optional switch, we're gonna go ahead and install this in the lower dash. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna show you how to do it real quick. It won't take too long. It's four bolts. So let's get started on that. Okay, right here on the, each side of your dash panel, there's a T25 Torx. We just need to pull that out and then this can click underneath. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pull the old lower dash panel off because I don't wanna strip out the threads. It's a kind of a weird angle getting up there, so we're just gonna pop it off real quick, but we have to take our ignition off, which in order to do that, there's a tab under here. Put your key in, push the tab up, and the ignition lifts out just like that. Behind this lower panel, there are plugs that go into these dummy plugs, one on each side and you just gotta pull that out and then this whole thing will slide out. All right, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, all we're doing is connecting these two wires to our red and yellow wire that came with that harness on the, for the TAC-10 lights. So we're gonna put a male and a female spade on each one because those are male and female and that'll allow us to just plug it in. Once you get this on the bench, you can take this, take the dummy switch out. And that's all the dummy switch is. There's no electronics to it. It's literally just a dummy switch. Now the optional switch, these are replaceable. So you can get new switches like this for this stuff. So if you have, uh, for instance, a cyber charger from Ciro, you can hook it up to a switch like this and that would turn it on and off instead of just relying on the key. But once these go in, Let's see if I can show you how this fits in. They just set in here, these little tabs, and they just kind of set there. And then when you put 
that into the, the lower dash panel, it sandwiches in between there. And then all you gotta do is screw those in and we'll put it back in. All right, so that's how it looks in the dash. These are two dummies. That'll be nice. Backside. So again, you have your accessory wiring here that's pretty much unused. We're just gonna zip tie this one to here. This one over here will get plugged back into the dummy and then every, all of this can go back on and we'll feed these wires back up through to the front of the fairing. Just when you feed these wires in, make sure they are accessible from the front of the bike and you can still get to them. Ignition goes in, don't lose your spring. Make sure the bike turns on, <laughs> and then we'll go ahead and tighten those up. It's only about a five to 10 minute job to take that panel off. If you try to do it without taking the ignition out, you don't have enough room to get the screwdriver straight on and you risk damaging the, the plastic threads in the bottom of that panel. So take the extra time, pull the ignition off, it's not that big of a deal, and save yourself a headache down the road. So the red and the yellow that you hooked together earlier will just go into your switch here. Connect one there, connect one there. Then when you turn the key on, you can see the light comes on now you have a switch on the dash to turn off that center light. Once you know everything's working, you can go ahead and tie your wires up out of the way. We are gonna put a little electrical tape around. There, theirs comes with a sheathing. Uh, the, the ones I added do not. So I'm just gonna put a little electrical tape around that connection so they don't touch. They're both power wires. One's hot and one's switched. So. Worst case, if they touch, you're just gonna get your lights flickering, but uh, nobody really wants that. Now we can go ahead and tie our wires out of the way. Harley Davidson gives you plenty of options of where to put your zip ties, so just kinda put them there, make sure the wires aren't rubbing against anything metal where they're gonna rub through. And make sure this relay is tied down well, because otherwise you'll probably hear it vibrating on the road. If you've ever seen any of my other install videos that involve the outer fairing, you always get some of Heather's socks and put them over the lights. That'll keep the lights from gouging into your fairing when you're sliding it back in place. Don't forget to hook up your headlight. Ta-da. Well, other than adjusting them so they point straight, that's pretty much it. One thing I did want to point out, when you put these on, make sure this tab is pointing away from the bike. If it's pointing into the bike, that means they're on the wrong side and it will put these lights too close in here and then you won't be able to get your fairing on. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> I did have them on the wrong side and I could not get the fairing on, so I had to kind of redo everything and reshoot it because I didn't want to mislead you guys by looking at that. One thing, I looked at the instructions and even though they're colored and pretty high detail, there's a little bit of an optical illusion and I went to work at 4.30 this morning, so I'm pretty tired. Anyway, I didn't look at it close enough and I put them on the wrong side. So I thought I'd better point that out because if you do it, it's gonna cause you about an hour extra work. <laughs> I'm gonna wait until it gets dark out before I aim these and tighten them all up, but that's pretty much gonna be the end of the video right there. Hopefully, this helps you with your own install on these. It's actually pretty easy, especially if you're not hooking up the switch. If you're not hooking up that switch, all you gotta do is connect that red and yellow wire and you're done. The lights will come on with your headlight or with your key, basically, and easy. I do like the switch. I like the fact that you can turn them on and off. So that's a nice option and I'm glad they do have that. If you guys like these lights, the link 
to the lights is in the description of this video. You can go there, it'll take you right to the page. They do offer a bar mount. They just released this. If you wanna hook them to your, to your bars here, they do have a bar mount for that. That being said, again, I hope this helped you guys out and we'll see you in the next one.